Hi there. The last video I put out, I was showing a method to make a jig for truing up a large unbalanced piece on the lathe. And I immediately had people saying, why didn't you just use your bandsaw and a circle cutting jig? Well, I do that. Unfortunately, I forgot to mention the reason I was making that video was to show an option for people who do not have bandsaws. I know I was a woodworker for quite a few years before I finally got one, and it's a lot cheaper to buy a small router, which will work just fine with that truing jig, than to buy a bandsaw. So I'm sorry I forgot to mention that. If it upset anybody, that's just the way it is. I always forget to mention something. Well, today I'm going to modify that jig a little bit and make a fluting jig out of it. Flutes are very common on columns, different things look pretty good. And I want to do a fluting jig to do on a bowl. Now there are a lot of bits you can use for fluting. This is a core box bit, makes a nice round bottomed flute. You could do something a little fancier like this plunge OG bit, might give a good effect. What I want to do is a 90 degree flute so I can take a contrasting wood and put the corner in to fill that spot. Now the problem with 90 degree bits is most of them are not 90 degrees. I've got a few of them and they're anywhere from about 87 degrees up to 92 or 93 degrees. The only one I have found yet that's exactly 90 degrees is the Freud bit. And I'm not trying to push Freud, but they happen to be the ones I've found that work very well. So let's take a look over at the lathe and I'll give you an idea how I'm going to make this jig. The first decision I have to make if I'm going to put flutes on this is how many I want to put on. And I want them to be evenly spaced. I'm using my index wheel, which has 24 indexes. And I'm going to go with six flutes, which means I want to draw a line at every fourth spot on the index wheel. Now my problem with this is I have no way of registering this pencil, so I make sure the point is always dead on. So I've taken and made a different tool rest. I've turned a piece of wood to one inch, which will fit my banjo, left the top a little larger, and put a flat piece of plywood on it. Now when I put this in here, I can move it up close, and my pencil will always be flat. So as I draw it along, I get my line. Then I'll move to the next spot and draw that, and so on. Now, the reason I went with six or every fourth position on the index wheel is that if I find I these are too far apart, I can easily put one exactly in the center between them. So now let's take a look at the jig. All right, let me give you a rundown on how I built this jig. If you did not see the previous video, I suggest you take a look. I'm not going to re-explain this end of the jig. It would take me longer to do that than for you to just watch that video. I think it's only about six minutes long, if I remember right. Now, the first change I made was to put a piece of piano hinge along here so I can adjust this angle to anywhere I want it. On this end, I didn't explain this well in the other video, I've got a piece of ready rod coming down and resting on top of this bench I made for my lathe. Underneath the plywood, I have a washer and a nut, and above, I have a washer and a nut, and I've got those squeezed tight so that this doesn't bounce around when I have the weight of the router on the jig. Here, I've got two pieces of T-slot. Into each of those, I've put a T-bolt, slid it along, then put a washer and a quarter 20 coupling on each one so that I can move those along wherever I need them to adjust it. On top of this ready rod, I put a nut and a T-knob. Squeeze them together so that this won't spin on there, and I can use it to adjust. Now I can screw that down into the couplings, and then when I've got that in there solid, I put this at the angle I want, bring this nut up until it's underneath there, holding it tightly, and then squeeze it from above with the washer and nut that are on top. 
Once those are both done, this is being held and I can put the router inside here. I'll take a look and see how this is going to work. I'm going to lower this bit until it just touches the wood and then I'm going to lock it in place. Now using a 1 8 inch spacer, I'm going to bring down and lock in place the depth control for a 1 8 inch deep cut. I don't want to take off too much in any one pass and I can put that down a little further after I've done one pass. I may take three or four passes to complete this. These lines that I drew, it was never my intention to do the routing on those lines. It was just to give me a visual reference of what I was going to get into by doing six slots. Now that I have this ready, I'm going to put on my ear protection, plunge this down that one eighth of an inch and do the first slot. That's not looking too bad at all. I'm going to go around do the other five. Then I'm going to reset it to a little deeper and do some more. I have all six of those slots cut to one eighth of an inch deep now. And I think they look pretty good. Now I'm going to lower that bit another one eighth of an inch and redo it. So first I'm going to raise it back up and change to a different post here give me some more room put it back down and, and put another 1 8 inch gap in here tighten that down and when I plunge it down I'll be down at the quarter inch mark That's looking pretty good. I'll do the other five again. I went one eighth of an inch deeper for a total of three eighths of an inch. And I'm quite pleased with these. Now my idea is to cut some square stock, probably out of walnut, for contrast, glue them in here. And then I'm trying to decide whether I want to go right down the center between these two, maybe a little shallower with the uh, walnut as well. And I don't want to take this off until I have finished all the routing because if I don't put it on exactly as tight as it is now, it'll throw things off a little bit. So there you go. This is not about the bowl, but the jig. So if I do finish this bowl, I'll put up some pictures or another video to show what it turned out like. I want to send out a thank you to Dwayne of the Calgary Wood Turning Guild. He came to the last meeting of the Central Alberta Wood Turning Guild and brought along a fluting jig. Now I didn't build mine the same as his. For one thing he uses a very light rotor and didn't need the support on the front, the rods that I put on. So thank you Dwayne if you happen to see this, I appreciate the inspiration. Now one thing about this one, if you decide to build one and you also are using a heavy rotor, I would suggest using 3 8 inch rod at the front. I noticed that the quarter inch ones were bending just a little bit, so safe is better than sorry and I just didn't have any 3 8 to change it to. I will probably do that in the future. Well I hope you've already got something out of this. Maybe you'll find some inspiration and build one of your own. If you do, let me know. Send me a picture. I'd love to see what you come up with. Thanks for stopping in. Have a great day in your shop. Be safe. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again. Take care. 
Remember at the beginning when I said that I often forget something? Well, there's something I forgot to mention this time again. I'm sure this is going to be obvious to most of you, but just in case it isn't, you can take that jig and lower the left end down till it's parallel with the bedways and do some spindle fluting as well. Just thought I'd better throw that in before I got lots more letters. Have a good day now.